Okay, this is a video where I more or less comment on a recording I did when I installed uh, Ubuntu on uh, my desktop. Uh, I've created a script for uh, automating a lot of the installations, so uh, I'll see when I need to comment anything. First of all, you need to get the ISO, and you get that from the xubuntu.org site. And uh, I'm uh, using a 64-bit version. I also installed this in a VirtualBox machine. So if you have a VirtualBox, you can do the same. Uh, there are some differences with uh, doing this on hardware. But anyway, I usually crank up the memory size and hard disk some. Not extreme, but that depends on uh, your actual physical hardware and what you can do. Um, when you have created your machine, you need to change some settings, uh, depending on what you want to do. And uh, for instance, processors is one good thing to add up. And since this is a client uh, virtual computer, I need to add some graphics memory. This USB option is completely optional, but I found that it works best with uh, managing USB uh, devices in the virtual machine. When you first start the machine, you just point out uh, which ISO file you want to install from. And then it's more or less like any physical computer. As you see here, I'm running a clock as well, so you can see uh, when I speed up the video. I'm going to install uh, in, uh, an English version, but uh, I will be changing the keyboard layout to Swedish. And here I just activate the downloading and uh, of uh, well extra uh, software so that more hardware will work out of the box. Uh, here you can have some options, and I really should have done uh, something else here, uh, so that my home folder would be in a completely separate partition. But this works fine for testing purposes anyway. Uh, it's more or less a normal installation, and... Uh, this is when I change my keyboard layout to Swedish. And if you are going to be a lot of users on the computer, you should encrypt your home folder on this screen. And never use login automatically. And then it's just to sit back and relax and let the installation proceed. When it's all done, you just hit restart. And this is when uh, there's uh, more or less a bug in uh, VirtualBox. This is the screen where you normally get the message to eject your disk. And if it doesn't, just press enter a few times, or and if that doesn't work, control C. And as you see on the clock, it's only been like eight minutes, and we are more or less done. If I only could type in my password correctly. Now the tweaking will commence. If you are new to uh, Zubuntu or Linux, uh, this may be a bit overwhelming, but the menu is up in the left corner as a default. Uh, and I've created a script that will do a lot of the installation and uh, updates automatically. And uh, if you can't follow the on-screen text, there are a 
link in the description. I mean, you need to change the execution mode and run it as a pseudo user or a user with special privileges. And then the script more or less runs itself. Uh, you will have to answer yes a few times or press enter and if a dialog like this pops up it's just type in cancel or relaunch or something. It will do that from time to time. Uh, this type of screens is when you need to accept some license agreement, in this case for fonts. But uh, later on this uh, Steam installation will ask you more or less the same thing. Uh, I will have updated the script some, uh, so you won't get as many questions as this video shows. But it more or less just press yes and enter. This is another dialogue, you can just close it. It's not important right now. To switch between yes, no, and so on in this type of screen, just use tab and enter. It's quite a long script, this, so uh, uh, I speed up the process quite a lot right here. Tab, enter, and arrow down, enter. The software that is installed right now is software that I usually use, and uh, if you are not going to use some, most of them, you could just open my script and uh, see uh, the list of commands, because it's just quite simply simple commands uh, that run in sequence. And when it's done, I present a list like this, where steps need to be taken manually. First of all, I need to change my whisker menu. Right-click it and just select Properties. I usually go for an icon and title and change the title to something else. And the icon is completely optional to change, and you can change it more or less to anything. My eyes are beginning to go bad, so I'm trying a bit larger icons, but you can experiment with, with it as you like. When you start to tweak Zubuntu, you will find that there are a lot of things you can change. And uh, I like to change the menu uh, like this. So I have the categories to the left. I don't think it's more in this menu. Let's check for the additional drivers. And uh, just open the settings, and there it is on the hardware, additional drivers. And depending on if you are using a physical box or a virtual box, you can add all or any uh, of the detected drivers. There are some problems with for instance, Broadcom drivers or AMD drivers and so on, but if you have Intel or NVIDIA, you should be just fine. Yeah, and the firewall, of course. And all we have to do with that is just to turn it on. I really like to open my menu with a Windows key, and that is done under keyboard shortcuts. So just look for the whisker menu pop up. And uh, since I'm in a virtual box, I need to go to full screen mode to uh, set this. And that I, I go to full screen mode with the uh, right control F.
and now for some change of themes. I'm not quite sure I like the dark themes, but it's quite modern, so I'm going to try it now. But you can go for any theme you want. The arc theme is installed through the script, and so is the Fainza icons. Uh, I'm using Fainza Darkest, I think. But Gnome is quite li likable. I forgot to change the window uh, appearance, so that will come later in the video, and you see that in the uh, titles in the windows. But that, that will be fixed later. Uh, wallpaper you can change for to anything you like, and I'm just going for one of the default ones. And I like a clean desktop, so I don't like uh, icons on my desktop. So under the Icons tab, uh, I will, will deselect uh, all of the icons that are on the desktop. I will be adding a, a dock to the screen later, so that is how I usually use my icons and launchers. And this is something I'm not quite sure I need, actually. I, I add some transparency to the, uh, the window decorations uh, in title bars. And when I drag a, or resize windows, it's sometimes useful to be able to see what's in the background. And you re really don't need a lot of uh, opacity. It's just, just a hint. Yeah, and to start the doc, you just type in docky or search for docky. And uh, there you go. And when you press the anchor, you will get the settings and you can select any um, theme you want. And if it drops out the configuration, just press the dock at the bottom. And to add uh, launchers to the dock, you just find them in the menu and drag and drop them. Quite simple, actually. And you can uh, easily rearrange them later, so uh, just drag and drop them to a location that suits you. Or less the last thing to do is to change the uh, the login screen, and uh, so it more or less harmonizes with the overall uh, theme for the user. You can change the login screen in a lot of ways, but this is enough for now. And here I go back and change the window uh, settings so the title bars in the windows will uh, be changed as well, more visible. So it's under the style tab where we were in the beginning, so I'll just select the arc theme here as well. And that will immediately uh, set the style so that the title bars are visible.
an older thing uh, left to do is to reboot and log in so the for this virtual box the full screen option uh, comes into effect and for that I just switch to full screen mode and you, you, you don't need to reboot again for this to be effectful you just need to log out and then this is what you will be met with the next time you start your computer a nice dock and uh, a lot of useful software and if uh, you're missing something just run the software program to install more or less anything you can imagine I hope you liked this video and uh, check out my uh, playlist on QGIS for beginners and QGIS quick tips if you are into the GIS software and uh, QGIS is of course installed in this uh, with this script as well I hope to see you next time